Good morning and welcome to Power Up for Success. I'm your host, Dr. Marcy Bryant, and I thank God for this opportunity to be in your living room this morning with you. I am so excited about what God is doing in the lives of his children all over the world. I just want to remind each of you that before you were born, God has set you apart for a special work. Even if you may not be feeling like that today, I want you to understand that there truly is a call on your life, on every person's life. There was a reason why you came into this world and why you were meant to be. I want to tell you uh, specifically that there is always a call. Whether you choose to answer the call or not, that is purely up to you. God will always ask ordinary people or the people that quote unquote considers themselves commoners to engage in uncommon acts or extraordinary things. And many of us, when we feel that tug on our heart, the first thing that enters is fear. Why? Because we feel like what we are perceiving that this call that God has put on us is greater than we could possibly make happen. And so, of course, we want to run from it. Look what Moses did. He wanted to run from the call when God told him to go to Pharaoh and said uh, to give Pharaoh a message to let my people go. Uh, first thing out of Moses' mouth, who am I that you should send me? You know, what can I say to Pharaoh? I mean, he's in charge of the entire land, the kingdom. I'm just a, a, a mere a single guy. But God reassured him and told him, I will be with you. I'm going to send your brother with you. And you will not be alone in this. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves that when we look at this call, that um, seems to be so enormous in our lives, we have to remind ourselves that God is calling us to it. So God is gonna take us through it. He will always assure you in his word that he is with you always. You of course have to make the decision. God isn't gonna force you to follow the call. He isn't gonna force you to do what he's called you to do. He is going to give you the mandate and you can say yes or no. Remember the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler in the Bible decided to not go and, and let his riches go and follow Christ. He said no. But there are others in the Bible who ended up saying yes. Paul was one. Of course, he was Saul before he his name was changed to Paul. But he was out, you know, ravaging the very first church. He wasn't working for the Lord. But when he fell from his steed on that road to Damascus, when he was blinded for three days, he had an opportunity to change his mind and change his thoughts. He decided to go in God's direction that he was calling him. And that's what God is saying to you today. He's saying, I have created you for a magnificent purpose. I am calling you to a great call that will not only make a difference in your life, but in the lives of others. But you are the one that had to say, yes, I'm going to go God's way and I'm going to do what God has called me to do. So with that, we are going to talk about our, uh, we're going to bring our guest on and we're going to have him talk about a life of service and uh, how he has, is being used of God and how he knew that God had called him. And I'm going to invite him on now and we are going to hear his story. Daniel or Douglas, I should say, Douglas Daniels. Welcome to Power Up for Success. How are you this morning? I'm doing good. I can't complain at all. Um, God is good and I get to see another day. Yes, we do get to see another day that the Lord has made. We're rejoicing, right? Mm -hmm. And we're being glad in it. That's right. Tell us about you, Douglas. What is it that you do that you find some, such joy in? 
um, well, there's two components to that. One on my job, I am um, a project man, a property manager here at the Chester Housing Authority. Um, I've been at the Chester Housing Authority now going on 16 years. And um, it has just been a pleasure and an honor to be able to serve um, um, most of my client base is um, lower income people. So let's get that out of the way. And um, you know what, sometimes they come with some, um, some issues that um, society has some problems with. So um, they come, so you need somebody uniquely that um, can handle them and, and, and know how to deal with them and see some of the issues that they, you know, they suffer from. Um, we have um, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, domestic violence, um, single parenthood. So we have a lot of issues like that. And I have a lot of people that come in and out of my office on a daily basis. I talk to them on a daily basis. And even with those who sometimes it seems their problems may be insurmountable, I still have been able to just um, been able to witness to them and talk to them and let them know that God loves them and that God cares. And that even though they think that the situation that they're going through is um, that they can't make it, that they can so that's one aspect of the work. And then the second side is on my private life. I am a, um, I'm a deacon at my church and um, I enjoy United Missionary Baptist Church and I enjoy every bit of um, what our pastor has taught us. And that is to be, to be a servant, to be able to give back that for those, the much is given, much is required. Um, I have had um, a wonderful life. I've been a blessed life. Um, and I just want to be able to give back in any capacity in which that is. So with that being said, um, I try to encourage, particularly our young folk, to let them know that um, it's not as gloom and doom as society would make it to be. Um, you see a lot of society, social media, um, the violence, the crime, the shooting, the carjackings. Yeah, that is bad. It is very bad. And we pray and we ask the God that he would deliver us from out of that. But even in the midst of all of that, God can still use you and God can still bless. Yes, he can. Yes, indeed. Now tell me how you knew that God had called you to this life of service. What, what was it about uh, uh, that was happening in your surroundings about you at the time and you knew this was the direction you had to go? Um, I have five sons. All five of my sons are adopted. And it seemed like as soon as they came into my life and they came into my household, my world was turned upside down. Doors were open that I thought that were closed. Um, God opened up so many doors for me and my family. And I just knew that, you know, the, the, God is trying to reach to you and to let you know that you do have a purpose and that you do, you, this is self-worth about all of us. Um, and mm -hmm. after adopting, sons and, and teaching them and I thank God even with the five of them they all are grown and out the house they're all on their own that um just in talking to them I can see that some of the things I instilled in them um did take hold and it did uh, mm -hmm. and and I proud myself on that mm -hmm. but even after that I've always been in the church I was raised in the church all my life mm -hmm. give us one example just one example of how you knew that God had called you to adopt those five and what, what he did to, to confirm it in, in your life. And I did hear you also say that you, some of what you have taught them, you have seen it play out in their life. Give us an example. Mm -hmm. Well, first, um, when we first went, let me just say this from the rec, from the start, I did not set out to adopt five young men. That was not okay. the goal. Um, basically what happened was is that my mother had a group home. My mother and father always had kids in the household and we had a group mm -hmm. and we had a mm -hmm. young um, man that we had from a baby, always had him from a baby. And um, the um, caseworkers came to my mom and my dad and said, look, uh, we're now um, the government, it had been mandated that we try to get some of these people, the kids out of the system. Um, and they had asked my parents that they wanted um, to adopt him. And my parents says, um, no, they thought they were too old. Or they were getting old and they thought they was too old to be able to, to want to adopt him. So mm -hmm. the caseworker says, well, do anybody else in your family that you think that what might be interested? And, um, I'm, and, and because he was always, a, he's, we were the only family that we knew, that he knew, I'm like, there's no way in the world we could lose him. So I set out with doing the paperwork and adopting him. But to make a long story short, come to find out that everything was not um, done properly on the state side. So they had not, 
they had served the, the, the parental rights of the mother, but not of the father. And when it mm -hmm. came time to us to do our paperwork, uh, it was a hold there. So um, that fell through that because he still had his rights and he wanted to assert those rights, could not do that. But that, st that did not stop me because I knew, I said, you know, you done did all the paperwork, you did the training, you did the orientation. You done, you done came too far to stop now. And mm -hmm. there was a young lady, a caseworker that stopped me one day. And she said, you know what, Doug? There's a lot of young black um, boys in the system. She says, and if we don't get them out the system and adopt them, um, you're going to have a bunch of angry young men, one, that are growing up into society. She says, but also look at this way. These angry young men that are growing up in society will be the very ones that's going to marry your sisters, your nieces, yeah, and your daughters. So you better get them now while you can do it. So that was the catalyst of me wanting to adopt. Um, and with my sons now, my one son has three sons of his own now. And he was one of those that always used to buck everything I said and always want to go against the grain. I watch him now with his three sons and I just shake my head because he says, well, I remember you told me oh, I, I couldn't do this and I couldn't do that. Now I see why. And the very way he bucked the system with me is now how he's holding them accountable. It is just so funny watching him with his yeah. three sons because I just shake my head. Isn't that wonderful to see those teachings actually manifest into something positive to make life better Correct. for others? And I can tell Correct. that you're enjoying doing a life of service, and that's very, very important. Now, I heard you say that you're a deacon in the church. How long have you been walking in that call? Let me tell you, let's go back. We, um, my pastor uh, uh, appointed us February of twenty. 20. And then if you can remember, the world went dark, pandemic, March of 2020. So literally, mm -hmm. we walked over two years because, you know, we were not, you know, we were doing everything virtual. I mean, we were doing stuff. The one thing I can say about it, we did train. Um, we had book training. Uh, we had mm -hmm. assignments. Uh, we had tests and quiz. This was not just that, oh, you want to walk. And that's it. No, we were trained and we were taught. And I was just ordained October the 16th. Oh, but that's absolutely that, was... wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Just ordained October the 16th. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that after we take this break and come back, because that's an exciting time for you right now. God bless <laughs> oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Prayer is our pipeline to God. And let's face it, we all need prayer from time to time. If you are standing in need of prayer, please contact us through our prayer line, 909-318-7015. We have 24-7 prayer warriors available for you, so you can call at any time. God wants to hear from you. He wants to meet your need today. From time to time, we all need encouragement in our Christian walk. God allowed me to and guided me through to create this small volume entitled 20 Steps Up to a More Glorious You. You can order your copy today by calling me at 888-996-0696 for only $9.99, including shipping and handling. Order your copy today. Welcome back to Power Up for Success. And we certainly hope that you are living a successful life. And we want you to continue to live a successful life. If you're just joining us, we've been talking with Douglas Daniels, and he has an amazing story uh, to share with us in just a little while about his life of service. It's, um, we, 
it's a shame that we can't tell you story after story after story because there are so many <laughs> success stories out there. But we can only select one. But before we do that, uh, Douglas, if you don't mind, give us your journey about becoming a deacon in your church. Um, and this is a little bit unorthodox. And then I tell people, this is why you know when God is real. Um, for the, I, I, let me go back a little bit. I had a, um, a tragic um, story that happened in my life where uh, two of my best friends were um, killed. They were murdered. And um, mm -hmm. I, I was a little angry. I was a little taken back. And I was kind of mad with God. And um, I had actually really left the church. I stopped going to church, didn't want to listen to gospel music, didn't want to do nothing because I was just angry that these mm -hmm. two um, men that loved God and served God, that they would, um, he would take, they would leave so harsh and so vicious like they, um, they were. And I was angry for a while, but I had a friend of mine that I used to sing in a choir with. Um, her church used to always have a family and friends day. And although I had turned my back on the church and God, I would still always make it this one year to go to their family and friends day. And um, it was just this one time I, I, I went and for the first time in this service, I didn't feel uncomfortable um, th that the message kind of just stirred my soul. And I, I came back the following Sunday then it came back the following Sunday the following Sunday and the following Sunday. And then I said, I thank God that pulled you back into the church through the back door. And before you know it, I was back in the church and had joined, mm -hmm. but still I was just was sitting in the back. Cause all I wanted to do was go into church, put my offering in the plate, hear the choir sing a song, have pastor to give the message and then leave. I never forget this one Sunday pastor stopped me as we're leaving. She says, uh, Doug, can I talk to you? And I said, sure, Pastor. She says, you know what? I have been praying and praying and praying, and God answered. And I would like, I want you to be a deacon. I said, me? She said, yes. I said, oh, I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I'm able. Um, I'm not. She says, I have prayed on it. God has given me confirmation. She says, now I need for you to pray. And that thing hit me like a ton of bricks. So finally, you know, I prayed and I was like, Lord, I, I, I don't even know what, a, you know, the, what am I, why me? I don't think I qualify as a deacon or doing any of that stuff. And God just answered and said, just do uh, what your pastor tells you to do and you'll be all right. And then that's when we started to train it and um, got to see what the responsibilities with the deacon were, how they serve, how they back up the church, mm -hmm. how they back up the pastor. And the funny thing about it is I have been doing these things anyway, because I always told my pastor, anything you ask me to do, I'm going mm -hmm. to do it. Yes. But it's just that it's magnified now that now I have official title, which never really meant much to me. But now that I see that more church members um, confide in me, um, mm -hmm. they call me for prayer, um, they call me for, you know, for consultations and stuff like that. And it's just amazing. And guess what? I take it very serious. Yes. I take it very serious. And um, I tell anybody, if God can use me and turn my life around, he can use anybody. Because I'm telling you, I'm, I was angry for a good little while. But mm -hmm. um, that's why I know that even in bad, God can get some good out of that and he can still mm -hmm. use you. Yes, yes, God can use you. And I am really, really happy to hear that, that how he just stepped in and you did not say no. You, you, you questioned some things, but you didn't say no to God and you went forward and you actually see that God is using you in the lives of the people. And it is a big help. Deacons are always a great help to the pastor. I know being a pastor yeah. myself, deacons are invaluable to us. Um, mm -hmm. I also now would like you to give us a, another success story. I like the one you just said, but give us a success <laughs> story about someone. You don't have to name names, but someone that, um, that God put you in a place at a time that made a difference in the life of someone else in this life of service that you um, are walking. I had a friend of mine that, uh, and again, we won't use names and all those kind of things. Exactly. Um, 
he had um, found out um, that he had tested for um, HIV. He was HIV positive. And um, he was crying over the phone to me. He was a little distraught and all those kind of things. And I said, you know what? Why don't we um, grab a bite to eat? And um, we went out to eat and we were sitting at the table. And of course, he was still upset with knowing all that was going on. And um, what was me? And um, I have no life, no purpose. And um, I might as well just give up. And I said to him, I said, look, let me tell you something. HIV nowadays is not a death sentence. I says, um, I said, you may think bad of me for saying this. I said, but it could be a way that God is going to get your attention. I says, and you got to live because he has two kids. Has two kids. I said, first of all, you have two young kids that you have to live for. And how would it be that you would willingly give up your life to leave them here to have to deal with the baggage that dad is? Uh, committed suicide. I said, we're not even going, we're not claiming that. We're going to not talk that. We're not going to listen to that kind of um, bad voices that's in your mind. You now need to figure out what do you do want to do with your life and how you move on with your life. I'm here to tell you that, um, and him listening to me, he did what he was supposed to do. This young man is now um, an uh, HIV AIDS activist. He is a public speaker and travels all around here now. And he is paid to speak. Um, he is in, hooked in with the different organizations, knows the latest um, medical terminologies or what's going on as far as treatment and prevention of um, HIV and AIDS. And he is an in-demand speaker. And he just said to me the other day when we were talking, he says, you know, it was you and you and talking to me, encourage me that I live and look at me today. And I wow. get so excited him because I saw him at his very low. And now this brother, I, 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 I would not give names because I would never want to put nobody in the carpet, but I'm no. telling you, this mm -hmm. man is, he's, he's turning this world upside down because he is now helping his community to rebound back from the stigma and the, um, all that about people being, um, having HIV. And I'm just so mm -hmm. proud of him. Yes, indeed. And that is a very, very good success story. And I'm glad you chose to share that particular one. Now, um, mm -hmm. before we conclude this interview, there are a couple of things I do want from you. And one is how will people get in touch with you if someone wants to talk to you about something um, that is pressing on their heart uh, or talk to you even about being in the life of a um, of a servant, how would you want them to contact you? Um, there's two ways you can contact me. You can always via by email, uh, and that's douglasdaniel at mail.com. And again, that's strictly my first name and my last name. No S on Daniel, though. It's just douglasdaniel at mail.com. Or um, I'm still old school. You can always text me. I have no problem giving up my phone number because I always okay. tell folk this. You never know when you may need to receive a call to help somebody. And my phone number is 215-301-6748. Mm -hmm. And we keep that number again. 215-301-6748. Okay, and, that's um, good. I was, I was praying with anybody and talking to anybody. Wonderful. And people do need prayer. And there are times when people just need to talk. They need a sounding board. They yeah. need to know that mm -hmm. somebody cares. Uh, and I thank God that you're there for those that God has put you there for, that you have indeed answered God's call. And in closing, uh, Douglas, uh, what advice would you like to give uh, the viewing audience with if regard to there's just if if there's one group I could reach out to, that yes. would be um, the senior and elderly population. I want mm -hmm. you to know you're never too old to serve. You're never too old to give back. We need seasoned saints to be able to flood the prayer lines. We need them to flood the atmosphere with positivity. We need them to be able to willing to mentor to young folk, to set an example, mm -hmm. because I'm telling you now, our world is in a troubled state. And the mm -hmm. only way we're going to reach the 
was is that we we had to now stand up and be better. We just can't sit back and say, I don't want to be bothering. It's none of my business. I'm going to stay here in my, in my house by myself. You got to come out of that cocoon because all yeah. hands on deck. All hands are on deck right about now. Mm-hmm. All hands on deck. I like that. Nobody sitting on the sidelines watching others That's work right. and no one and and then someone whom God has called is not doing their share. Oh, thank Correct. you so much for uh, sharing <laughs> that information with us today. And Douglas, I certainly hope I get to see you in the near future. I've enjoyed this interview immensely. So thanks for being on the show. Thank okay. you so much. Mm -hmm. And to those of you who are listening out there, uh, I think our guest today had an excellent, excellent word for all of us in the area of service. So my question to you now, is God calling you? Only you can answer that for yourself and only you can say yes or no to his call. Think about it. Maybe God is calling you with regard to the work that you do currently or maybe he's calling you with regard to relationships. He wants you to help others improve their relationships or maybe even you to improve relationships. Is he calling you in the area of being uh, better with your money or helping other people uh, to be better with their money? You know, there are some people who just don't know how to manage and budget and you might be an excellent budget person and you can help someone else do the same. Is there someone in your sphere uh, of influence or someone in your circle who is constantly worrying or fearful about things that know what God wants them to do and or they're fearful that what God wants them to do that they can't accomplish it. Whatever the reason, just know that God wants to use you God has already gifted you with a gift and a talent, and God wants to use that to make not only your life better, but the lives of so many others. God bless you, and thanks for being here with us today. We want you to have a great week in the Lord, and I look forward to visiting you next week. God bless you. Prayer is our pipeline to God, and let's face it, we all need prayer from time to time. If you are standing in need of prayer, please contact us through our prayer line, 909-318-7015. We have 24-7 prayer warriors available for you, so you can call at any time. God wants to hear from you. He wants to meet your need today.